Anytime you want to say thank you, go ahead and do it. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. He kept you when you drove your car here. He kept you if you walked here. He kept you if you made your way to the house of God. You ought to tell God thank you. Hallelujah. Acts the first chapter. Start reading at verse number verse number six. When you found it, shout, I got it. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you restore at this time the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you shall receive power. Somebody shout power. power. Come on, shout power. power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. Somebody say witnesses. In Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Go back to verse number six. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the father has fixed by his own authority. But you shall receive, somebody say power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses. Somebody say witnesses. In Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. For just a few minutes we want to talk from the subject God needs a witness. Somebody shout God needs a witness. God needs a witness. This past Wednesday marked a significant day in the life of this country. Uh, 50 years ago to the day this past Wednesday, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee on the balcony of the Lorraine Hotel. He was in Memphis marching with black sanitation workers who were protesting unfair pay practices uh, of the local sanitation company. Somebody say company. Uh, Dr. King, by the time of his death, had not only fought for civil rights, but by this time he was including to his positions economic justice. Somebody say justice. Dr. King understood that part of the struggle was to gain access to public facilities without the hindrance of discriminatory practices. But he also understood that while, uh, while you are sitting at the table is important, it's also important to be able to afford what's on the menu. So it was with that that Dr. King's last fight would be for economic equality and justice. Somebody say justice. This past week, I was blessed to be engaged in several conversations on the methods and practices and legacy of Dr. King. What I gleaned most from that was that Dr. King, if he was nothing else, Dr. King was a witness for God. Somebody say witness. Dr. King traveled throughout this country with a fundamental belief, and that was that love conquers hate. Everybody say love conquers hate. Uh -huh, that no matter where hate existed, whether in the overt, overt racism of the South or the covert racism of the North, Dr. King believed that if you embrace the ethic of love, love always wins. Somebody say wins. Even though there were those who attempted to perpetuate the philosophy of violence and rejected King's Jehonite, Jehonite philosophy of love, King embraced it anyhow. Somebody say anyhow. King understood that God needed folk who were not ashamed to bear witness to the greatness, goodness, and glory of God by standing up for their God-given right. Somebody say yes. King understood that he served, that, that, that God, the God that he served had been too good for him, for him to hate somebody else. Even though he was attacked even by those who looked like him, uh, like the real statement, statesman he was, he refused to attack back. Somebody say yes he remained focused on freedom everybody say freedom everybody say justice everybody say equality he, he was a witness because as he said in his book the strength to love do to us what you will we shall continue to love you we cannot in all good conscience obey your unjust laws because non-cooperation with evil is just as a more obligation as is cooperation with good throw us in jail we still gonna love you send your hooded perpetrators of violence into our community at the midnight hour and we still gonna love you one day we will win freedom but not only for ourselves we shall so appeal to your heart and conscience that we shall win you in the process and our victory will be a double victory somebody say yes 
It was this disposition, the love strategy that tore down the chains of segregation and Jim Crow. Dr. King was a witness for God. Somebody say witness. He understood, watch this y'all, who he was. He understood what his assignment was. He understood the responsibility of his generation was given as related to freedom and justice. Somebody say justice. Dr. King was a witness for God, for his faith, and his fight went hand in hand. He said on one occasion, and I love this, y'all, we must keep God in the forefront of every struggle. Somebody say yes. It was with this mindset that he made sure in everything he did, in every place he went, he made sure. Watch the hook, y'all. He was a witness for God. Somebody say witness <coughs> for God. Whether in preaching, whether in teaching, whether in lecturing, whether in protesting, whether in marching, no matter what he did, he made sure that the philosophy of love was the ethic he promoted and nonviolence was the tactic he employed. Dr. King was a witness for God. Somebody say witness for God. No wonder he was able to declare on the night before his death that God allowed him to go to the mountaintop and he looked over and he saw the promised land even on the night before, he, before his death, he wanted folk to know that in present struggles and future obstacles, he was still going to be a witness for God. Somebody say witness for God. The world needed folk, Dr. King, who knew could not be distracted. He could not be delayed. He could not be denied. Watch the hook, y'all. He was a witness for God. Somebody say witness for God. Watch this. He knew what he was on earth to do. And whether he was a professor, whether he was president of a university, or whether he was a civil rights leader, he was going to be a witness for God. Somebody say witness. Beloved, it may sound shocking to you, but please don't think the title of witness belongs only to Dr. King. God also expects you and I, y'all feel the hook, expects us to be witnesses for him. Say yes. Dr. King had his mission. Yes, he had his assignment, but he not only had that, he knows also that we are chosen also by God. Say yes, although we sit here and can openly admit that the progress we've made has been good. Somebody say yes. We've made a whole lot of progress since 1968. Somebody say yes. I can't hear nobody in here. We made a whole lot of progress since 1968. Somebody say yes. But can you also testify, we still have many, 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 many more mountains to climb. Even though many of us in our community have advanced, let us be honest as we sit here today, whether collectively or individually, we still got more rivers we got across. Say yes. Even though more of us have access to things that many of our ancestors never had access to, let us not be naive. We still have more mountains to climb. Say yes. God is in need of a witness. Say witness. God needs those who understand that regardless of their profession, regardless of their vocation, regardless of their calling, they are called to be light in dark places. Somebody say yes. When you're a witness, you understand that darkness does not destroy darkness. It only adds to the darkness. You understand because God has shined his light on you. You've been called to bear witness by shining the light on everybody else. Say yes, y'all. God calls us to shine our light. Yes, sir. Let's be honest in here. There are enough dark places in the world that need some light. Can I get a witness in the building? Let us be honest in here. There's some dark places in this country that need some light. Can I get a witness in here? Let me bring it closer to home. There's some dark places in this state that need some light. Let me bring it closer to you. There's some dark places in this city that need some light. I got to help somebody. There's some dark places in our homes that need some light. And God calls each of us to shine the light in every dark place. Why? Because God shined his light on you. Can I get 10 folk to testify that the reason I can shine my light because God has shined his light on my life. Somebody say shine your light. Say shine your light. Y'all not saying it. Say loud. Say shine your light. H hear me y'all. Shining your light is bearing witness that God has been good to you. Can I get a witness in the building? Has God been good to anybody in here? Has God been good to any? That's a, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. Keep going, Coleman. Has God opened doors for anybody in here? Has God made ways for anybody in here? Has God healed anybody in here? What's this? What's this? Somebody say, shine your light. What's this? What's this? When you shine your light, you're bearing witness to what God has done in your life. It's not being negative. That's, that's darkness. 
It's not being judgmental. That's darkness. It's not being unfocused on God's mission. That's darkness. It's not being a rock thrower, destroying people with your mouth. That's darkness. It's not siding with those who choose to oppress the marginalized and isolate others. That's darkness. It is, in fact, being witness that God is good and his goodness reigns forever. That's the light. God needs a witness. Somebody say witness. Oh, yeah, the broken need a witness. The lost need a witness. Wounded families need a witness. Marriages need a witness. The addicted need a witness. The poor need a witness. Our children need a witness. Let me throw a shout out. Underpaid teachers need a witness. Y'all better wake up on Sunday morning. And it's our responsibility to shine the light. Somebody say shine the light. God needs those who are not ashamed to work and witness sharing the light that's been shined on them. If God has been good to you, you ought to say something. If God has made a way for you, you ought to say something. If God has opened a door for you, you ought to say something. If God has provided for you, you ought to say something. If God has healed your body, you ought to say something. If God has dried your tears, you ought to say something. Can I get some folk to give them glory and say something? Somebody say yes. Somebody knows he's healed your body. Somebody knows he's made up after you messed up. Somebody knows he's delivered you from danger. Somebody knows he helped you when you were hurt. Somebody knows you ought to be a witness. If he was bread in a starving land, if he was water in a thirsty land, if he was a bomb in a sick land, if he was a battle axe in a fighting land, then you ought to be the number one person opening your mouth and is willing to be a witness for God. Is there anybody in here that's willing to be a witness? Somebody shall be a witness. That's what we discover in the text this morning. After the resurrection, Jesus is seen several times before his ascension. The last time he is seen with his disciples is right here before he ascends. He instructs them not to leave Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which was the Holy Spirit. Jesus goes further and he says, he says, uh, John baptized you with water. He said, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Uh, therefore, therefore, when they had come together, the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, uh, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father has put in his own authority. Jesus is telling the disciples, y'all mind your business, I will mind mine. Somebody say, man. He, he, then, he, then he does something that's so radical. I'm about to kill the crowd. Here it is. He gives them orders. He says, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be, check it now, my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Somebody shout witnesses. Y'all so soft today. Say witnesses. Y'all going to miss the hook. Out of all the jobs he could have gave them, out of all of the assignments he could have laid out, out of all the vocations he could have given them, he said, I, all I need you to do is be a witness. He, he could have given anything to them in their laps, but out of his mouth he says, this movement right here needs a witness. God ain't looking for folk to build churches. He needs a witness. He ain't looking for folk to build cathedrals. He needs a witness. God ain't looking for building keepers. He's looking for a witness. G God said, what I need first and foremost is a witness. Somebody say witness. Remember the context, y'all. It was 11 disciples. Judas had killed himself. So it was 11 and some sisters. They all had seen Jesus be crucified. They had seen Jesus be buried. Now they had seen him risen from the dead. Check me now. They saw him die. They saw him be buried. They saw him raised from the dead. Oh, it's going to get good. Jesus said, I don't want you to go back to business as usual. Okay, here it is. He didn't want them to go back to the status quo. He was trying to make earth shakers and change makers. So he tells them, once you get some power, go and be a witness. Somebody say witness. 
He didn't want to go back to them becoming and transforming themselves in the Pharisees and Sadducees. You remember Jesus said to the church folk of the time in the Gospel of Mark 7, 13, he says, and so you cancel the word of God in order to hand down your own tradition. Jesus did not want warmed over church folk. He wanted those who believed in the power of God that it could change the world. He knew God wanted folk who were willing to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Such is the case today. God needs a witness. Somebody say witness. What all the disciples had in common, watch the hook, y'all. What all the disciples and the women had in common, here's the hook. Don't miss it. What all the disciples and the women had in common is that they all had seen Jesus. Beloved, hear me. Claiming church membership ain't enough to be a witness. Having spent all your life in church does not qualify you to be a witness. Having your parents drag you to church does not make you a witness. Saying that you know the 66 books doesn't make you a witness. Saying you know every hymn and the hymnal doesn't make you a witness. Having your name on a church roll doesn't make you a witness. What makes you a witness is that you can testify that you've seen him. Is there anybody in here that's your testimony that you've seen God for? For you, uh 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 uh. I need some folks to testify. I've seen God. I've seen God move some stuff, lift some stuff, transition some stuff, move some stuff, heal some stuff, provide some stuff. Is there anybody in here that's ever seen God for you? Somebody shout! I've seen him. I've seen him. Have you seen God bring folk in your life? Say yes. Have you seen God escort some folk out your life? Then you ought to be the first person to give them glory and shout, I've seen God for myself. Somebody shout, I've seen him. Uh-huh. Watch this. Here it is. Sit down. Because you can't claim, you can't claim to be a believer just because you come to church. Somebody talk back to me in here. You can't claim to be a witness just because you grew up in church. Somebody say yes. Y'all going to miss the shout in here. Because if you know God, then all you need to remember is that at the end of my testimony, I've seen God for myself. Somebody say yes. Abraham saw him. Huh? When he was sacrificing Isaac, Jacob saw him when he wrestled with the angel all night. Moses saw him when God showed him a piece of his glory on Mount Sinai. Uh -huh, uh -huh. David saw him when he was in the valley against Goliath. Hannah saw him in the temple with Samuel. Let me put it at show street. Grandmama saw him in a house with all them kids. Granddaddy saw him working third shift on his job. Somebody knows God will show up. Leave you least expect it. Is there anybody that knows that? you seen God for you you got to be able to say I've seen his hand touch me I've seen his arms embrace me I've seen his word guide me I've seen him provide in starving land I've seen him dry tears from my eyes I've seen him rock me to sleep when I was worried is there anybody in here that could jump up right now and shout I've seen him for myself Slap your neighbor and say, I've seen him. I see. Watch this. Watch this. If you're going to be a witness, somebody say a witness. Come on, shout a witness. Coming to church ain't going to get you to the kingdom. Come on, somebody. Coming to church does not get you to heaven. Say yes. Y'all going to help me. Y'all better say something to me. Say yes. Your testimony has to be that I'm at the gate saying, I want to see the man. <laughs> That's met me when I was on earth. You got to be able to testify that I've seen God's hand. I've seen God's face. I've seen God show up when I least expected it. God made ways where there weren't no way. What's this? Somebody shot. I've seen them. In order to be a witness, you got to be able to testify that you've seen them. But point two, and I'm going to raise it with you. Here, here's going to get murky right here. Um, I don't know who this is for. But being a witness means you're also able to bear witness that in spite of what you've done, God still loves you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I thought I'd get better than that. I thought I'd get better than that. All those disciples, in one way or another, left Jesus at his weakest point. When they came to get Jesus, all the other disciples scattered. Y'all remember Y'all remember, Jesus is upstairs getting beat down. 
Peter's downstairs, warming himself by the fire. First person comes to him and says, hey, hey, when you with a old boy? Uh, old boy. I don't know who you're talking about. Second person comes on and says, weren't you with the Galilean? Mm, I don't know no Galilean. I know some Baptist folk, but I don't know no Galilean. Third person comes. Hey, man. Little girl shows up, says, uh, you look like the dude that used to run. He start cussing. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all too saved. He start cussing at the little girl. Book said Peter runs off. Jesus is crucified. Judas betrays him and kills himself. So now you're losing ranks. You go from 12 to 11. 11 to 10. And the other 10 are nowhere to be found. Yet when he's risen from the dead, here's the shout. Woo! The women come to the tomb. That's a whole other sermon. On another day, the sisters show up. Because they want to anoint his body. Huh? They're looking for Jesus. Uh, the angel said, uh, Jesus tells him, he says, he said, look, go, go, go tell the disciples and Peter that I'm risen from the dead. Here's the shout, y'all. Jesus was justified to lead them jokers behind. He was justified to forget about them. But because he loved them so much, in spite of what they've done, he still wanted them. Can I blow your mind? In spite of what anybody has ever done, God still loves you no matter what. Can I get some folk to testify? Can I get some folk to testify? I ain't always been in church. But he kept on loving me. I ain't always done everything he wanted me to do. But he kept on loving me. I haven't dotted every I. But he kept on loving me. I haven't crossed every T. But he kept on loving me. I made some mistakes. But he kept on loving me. I tripped up. But he kept on loving me. I did some things that make him ashamed. But he kept on loving me. Is there anybody going to give God glory right now? Because I'm a witness. He'll keep on. Slap somebody and say, he loved me, he loved me, he loved me. Eee! That's why, watch this, but that's why, that's why, hey y'all, that's why you and I have no business judging anybody. I can't hear nobody in the house right now. You, you, you can't judge folk because you don't know where they've been. You can't judge folk because you don't know where they are. Maybe you don't believe Coleman, but you'll believe the book. The book says, judge not lest you be judged. For with the same measure you judge, it shall be meted back to you. In other words, mind your business and pray for folk. Is there anybody in here that can give God some glory? Watch this. No, watch this. No matter how far you go, y'all know God, God's love will find you. Say yes. No matter how deep you get, God's love will find you. Yes. No matter how many times you fail, God's love will pick you back up. Yes. No matter how many times you relapse, God's love will help you recover. Right. So some folk tell a lie that God has limits and he'll only give you so many chances. That's a lie. Let me bust y'all in the head this morning. Don't, don't let anybody lie to you and tell you that God will only give you a certain amount of chances. Mm. Prove it. Prove it. Somebody say prove it. Because mm -hmm. I'm looking at ragamuffins here. And I know some of y'all are on chance 569,752. Now those of you on your second chance, this ain't for you. But I'm talking about those who know he gave you another chance. And 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 another chance. I wish I had some folk in here that could jump up because he keeps on blessing me. Every day I wake up, he keeps on blessing me. Every morning I get up, he keeps on loving me. Is there anybody in here that can give God glory? Stacy, I heard old folks say, I heard old folks say, Stacy, it may not catch you the first time. It may not catch you the second time. It may not catch you the third time, but you keep on staying with God. And after a while, that thing going to catch you. And before you know it, you're going to be crying in your car. You're going to be raising your hand in the shower. And you're going to be saying, thank you. 
for loving me. Is there anybody in here that can jump on your feet because he keeps on loving you? He keeps on. Is there anybody that can jump up right now because he keeps on? Slap your neighbor say, he keeps loving me. He keeps loving me. Yee. Watch this. Watch this. Sit down. Sit down. God, God needs a witness that can testify that you've seen him. Somebody say, I seen him. I said it with a T. Say, I seen him. <laughs> he needs you to testify um, and share that God still loves you no matter what you've done. Here's point three. I'll raise it with y'all. Um, God needs you and I to be a witness. Y'all know Coleman? Because I got to put the social gospel in here. Uh, God needs you and I to be a witness so that we can advocate for those who can't advocate for themselves. Watch me. Jesus sends the 11 out with the sisters. Feel me? He doesn't send them out as Christians. <laughs> I just mess your whole religion up. The term Christian is a New Testament term, and the first time it's mentioned, it's mentioned in the negative light. It's not mentioned in the positive light. Jesus never calls his followers Christians. He calls them disciples, right? Because a Christian is a badge. It's a title. Being a disciple means you're a follower. So Jesus says, he didn't send them out as Christians. He said, y'all are followers of the way. Their task was to take the message they experienced and share it with the world. No matter whose ears it falls upon. And often the ears that desired it the most were the least, the lost, and the leftover. They challenged the status quo that exploited the weak and stole from the poor. They challenged the church that sought profit over people. They challenged the government that took advantage over the marginalized. They spoke truth to power. Beloved, God needs a witness that will stand in the shoes of Jeremiah, Isaiah, Malachi, Deborah, and Esther. Cry loud and spare not. The crisis of underfunding for education didn't just start in Oklahoma. Y'all, y'all, it didn't just begin yesterday. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. There are those that complain, Belani, about not having books. There are those that complain about overcrowded schools, overcrowded classrooms. There are those that complain about not having adequate facilities to educate their children. As I heard that this week, I said to myself, welcome. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Y'all just missed it because y'all sleep in that middle classism. You can't get out of it. I understand. Welcome. Now you know what it was like for African Americans who for hundreds of years had to learn with a candle that was lit at night. Had to put together books and sheets of paper in order to get an edge. Welcome. We, we, we've always had inadequate facilities, but somehow we always educated ourselves. I'm not saying you shouldn't get your money. You get your money you need, but, but please understand, you can't depend upon Pharaoh to provide for you. You better learn how to provide for yourself. Is there anybody in here that knows something about freedom and justice? That we had to learn when nobody would help us. We had to educate ourselves when nobody, I wish I had. Um, um, what you and I can't afford to do is sit on the sidelines and not get in the conversation regarding police brutality, mass incarceration, or poor health care. Y'all talk to me in here. Please don't think because you in the land where the wind comes sweeping down the plains, that you don't have struggles like everybody else. You can't keep silent with a racist president, an incompetent Congress, and a neglectful, foolish governor. Help me somebody. Y'all can't help me preach in here. 
You can't keep quiet. You can't keep quiet when you know the systems that have been designed and created were meant to help the rich and exploit the poor. You can't keep silent when kids are still being neglected, not only in the classroom, but they're neglected when it comes to health care and food. You can't keep silent. And now we sit and God says, I need a witness. I need folk who are willing to choose the assignment and let the assignment choose them that are willing to stand up for freedom and stand up for justice. That's, that's what he told the disciples. Let me read it to you. On account of my name, they'll deliver you to synagogues and prisons. They'll bring you before kings and governors. This will be your opportunity to serve as a witness. So make up your mind not to worry beforehand how to defend yourself. For I will give you speech and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist and contradict. Jesus told his disciples, you need to stand on the right side of history. He says, if anything, don't be an undercover Christian. Don't be a secret agent saint. Don't be the frozen chosen, but declare like the prophet. Let justice roll down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. God has not promoted you and favored you to act unconcerned. God has not been so good to you in your life to act like stuff doesn't matter to you. God has not opened doors for you to act like you got it other people need to get it for themselves he blessed you to be a blessing to somebody else he blessed you to get your hands dirty he blessed you to help liberate the oppressed is there anybody in here that's willing to give God glory because you know you're blessed beyond measure <laughs> somebody say get in the fight somebody say get in the fight come on say get in the fight you can't sit idly by and allow this to happen in what's going on. Oklahoma is on the map internationally. Watch this, y'all. Not because of football. Oh, y'all oh, got quiet. Did you hear quiet again? We pump millions of dollars in the football programs, in the sports programs. But you can't pay our teachers a, a pay salary that lets them not have to get a second. I'm not against sports, but we pump millions of dollars. Can I say this further? You give corporations tax cuts. Every time you turn around, the oil and gas company got a tax cut, and you ain't got enough money to fund a school. Something's wrong, y'all. Y'all better say something to me. It's time to say something. It's time to be a witness for God. Slap somebody and say, be a witness. Don't sit idly by and allow the powers that be think they have power and control. Can I go further? Somebody say go further. And let me add it. It ain't even on the script. One of the, we have one of the most crooked uh, persons that are over the Environmental Protecting Agency who was right here from Oklahoma, Scott Pruitt. He is as crooked as the day is long. Get y'all. I preach to myself. At the end of the day, we will not be quiet. We will not close our mouths. We've been screaming, crying aloud, sparing not since the days before. When something is wrong, you need to speak about it. You need to pray for justice and speak about justice. Because when God has the final say, you can testify. When God gets through with this thing, God is going to connect all the dots together. Is there anybody in here that's willing to be a witness for the... Somebody say, be a witness. Somebody say, be a witness. Don't sit idly by and come to church. And the only mark of your connection with God is that you come to church. Be a witness and discover where you need to serve and help change the world. Be a witness and speak truth to power and help change the world. Be a witness and strengthen somebody who you're connected to and help change their world. Be a witness and lift somebody who is down on their luck and change the world. Be a witness and empower somebody who is weak and change the world. Is there anybody in here that's willing to be a witness give them praise right now y'all not praising them a witness doesn't mind praising the Lord a witness doesn't mind calling on his name a witness that if I had 10,000 tongues I'd thank God with everyone a witness won't run when nobody's chasing them they cry when nothing gets sad they dance when there is no music they raise their hand when they can't say a word are you a witness this morning has God been good to you has he opened doors for you has he made ways for you has he healed your body 
Has he kept your children? Has he kept you? Has he kept your mind? Then somebody stand on your feet and shout, I'm a witness. Shout, I'm a witness. He's been better to me than I've been to myself. He's lifted me. He's provided for me. He's healed me. He's restored me. Somebody shout, I'm a witness. Give God glory. Somebody shout, I'm a witness. Turn to your neighbor, say witness. Witness. Tell us somebody he's good. Tell somebody he's wonderful. Tell somebody he's awesome. Let the redeemed of the Lord give God glory. Shout, I'm a witness. Praise him now. Praise him now. Praise him now. Praise him now. Don't be quiet. Praise him now. Don't close your mouth. Praise him now. Somebody give him glory. Be a witness. Slap somebody and say, be a witness. Stop being quiet. Be a witness. Stop closing your mouth. Be a witness. Stop acting like you ain't blessed. Be a witness. Stop acting like he ain't done nothing for you. Be a witness. Somebody give God glory. Let everything that has breath be a witness and glorify God right now. Right there. Keep standing. Somebody shall be a witness. The church is not designed for itself. <clears throat> Say it again, Coleman. The church is not designed for itself. The church was designed to change the world. Somebody say change the world. Change the world. What good is it if we're changed in here and nobody's changed out there? Y'all talk to me in here. This is the season where we are called to bear witness that God is great and greatly to be praised. Yes, he is. Come on now. Can, can I do it? Can I do it? Everything, man, y'all gonna make everything you saw this week at the state capitol. Guess where they learned that from? <laughs> Come on now. Y'all ain't say. Y'all must not have woke, been awake in the history class. Make it clear. I heard them, Brother Lonnie. I live across the street. Make it clear. So they were saying, I shall not be moved oh, oh, just like a tree that's planted by the waters. Uh -huh. I shall not be moved. And I'm saying to myself, I heard that before. I, I heard that before. As Dr. King would say, somewhere I read. <laughs> the ancestors sang that during the movement. Yes, Do you understand, y'all? Yes, We're at the greatest time in history right now. And what God is calling for is us believers to not go around as covert Christians, but we would actually be a witness and testify that God will change the world. God will change you. Is there anybody could give God glory right now? Somebody shall be a witness. Be a witness. Say, be a witness. Be a witness. Yeah. 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 I was intentionally going to preach that. Uh, 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 in light of all this happening this week uh, with kids being out of school and in light of the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. King. Yes. And, yes. and hear me, y'all. I did with it on Wednesday more in depthly. Dr. King. Uh, Louis Farrakhan said this, and I believe this. Louis Farrakhan said this. He says, Dr. King was not killed because he was a dreamer. He was killed because he was woke. Woo. Yeah. There he is. I read that and said to myself, oh, yeah, I'm going to tear that up. I'm going to get to that thing because he was woke. He didn't kill him because of his dreams. Right. He killed him because he started to see stuff yeah. as it really was. Don't be tripped up because I said, Louis Farrakhan, you ought to read and educate yourself from everybody. That's why y'all look at me like that. Amen. <laughs> Reads, y'all, with an S. Reads. <laughs> Knowledge does not hurt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ain't never killed nobody to read. <laughs> he was killed because he was woke. And isn't it interesting? We're watching this show that the same fight, almost struggle, that happened in the 60s is the same struggle going on today. Mm -hmm. I can't hear nobody in here. Yeah. You, what, you telling me we still fighting for teachers to make a decent salary? For real? For real? All, 
All of this industry y'all see happening in Bricktown. Y'all ain't gonna, y'all scared to say something to me? Amen. All that, all that happening. And you ain't got no money. Come on, come on, come on. And then you have, and then you elect somebody. I said you elect, because I didn't elect her. You elect somebody who has the audacity to say, um, that's like, that's like a kid asking for a new car. And you telling me it's people, it's people like us that don't vote? What's wrong with you? Come on, that's right, that's right. Wake up. If you're a believer, Wake you cannot up. sit on the sidelines. Wake you're up. called that's to be a witness. Yeah. Somebody praise them. You're called to be a witness. I know, I know it's rough. I know it's tough. I know where I am. I know what I know what state I live in. So I you know, I, got to, I try to get it. I ain't, for Chicago, D.C., New York, we fight, they fight 24-7. For many of us, it's the, it's the danger of being content and complacent. Not realizing that the struggle is real, y'all. Have you ever been to one of these schools, y'all? I got teachers in here. How many teachers I got in here? Principals, teachers. Have you ever been to one of these schools? Y'all, I want y'all to take, boy. Y'all don't understand, man. It's rough. It's rough. And when you got a classroom of 35 kids. Jesus, Jesus. Y'all, y'all ain't say nothing to me. Why? 35 kids. What'd she say? What'd she say? And they back. <laughs> and right, right. You got 35 kids. Everybody got 15 different personalities. And you paying me $22,000, $25,000 a year. No, for real, y'all. Not a livable wage. I mean, no, really. I got to work another job and get up to them kids. You, you can't tell me that God doesn't need a witness, y'all. Come on now. You can't tell me that. It is time for us to stop sitting silently by and allowing these things to happen. So we know, we know our responsibility is to be a witness for the Lord. To tell folk, no, God going to work that out because we going to pray that thing. And if prayer don't work, we going to march. And if marching don't work, we going to protest. And God forbid we pray, march, and protest. I wish I had some help in the house today. So hear me. So hear me. God needs a witness. Doesn't matter where you come from. Doesn't matter the life you have had. This is the season where you articulate all those things that you know you need to say to help encourage, lift, and push somebody. Yes, Jesus. My God. When the kids start asking to go back to school, right. Right. Y'all just right. Right. the kids always look for a break. Right. I heard more kids say, I can't wait till they start school. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Isn't this, Sherry, isn't it crazy? Our kids been out all week. But do you know they didn't stop sports? You right. You right. They didn't stop sports. No, Brother McKinney. They did not stop sports. Chandler had a baseball game Monday, baseball game Tuesday, golf tournament Wednesday, golf tournament Thursday. You're you not in school, but you playing sports. Maybe that's just me, y'all. That's crazy. That's crazy. We, we got money for the activity bus to take you for a game. Y'all ain't helping me, boy. Oh, but, but no, that's crazy, Don. That's crazy. That's insane. Yeah, right. At some point, something has to shift. Oh, my God. This and this state can no longer be last in education. Come on, y'all. come on. There it is. Hey, I'm sorry. It just can't be. So, 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 so excuse me for that digressing, because I digressed a lot. But I had to raise it because it just, it, it, all of it correlates, the, the right. walkout, That's the right. 50th anniversary of Doc, all of that. Right. It doesn't happen by accident, y'all. Right. God purposely orchestrates all of that to make us get, a, get awake in our minds to say, y'all, we got to make sure we're on the front line. Yeah. And we're empowering our kids. I had a student tell me, I had a student tell me, I tell you this and I'm done. I had a stu- uh, student in my class at OU come to me and tell me. It was about a week, a month ago, a month ago. He came and told me. He said, I said, how you doing? He said, man, I'm struggling. 
I said, what do you mean you're struggling? He said, Phew. graduated from a public school in Oklahoma City at the top of his class. He looks me in my face and says, I said, Doc, why are you struggling? He said, Pastor Coleman, I wasn't prepared for this. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. He said, Pastor Coleman. I said, Doc, didn't you graduate at the top of your class? He said, I graduated at the top of my class. He said, I was in the top 10%. Mm. He said, I failed every class my first semester. Didn't pass one test. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Were you in the top of your class? He said, Pastor Coleman, they ain't prepared me for this. Then he hits me with this. He said, Pastor Coleman, I ain't learned something since freshman year of high school. Ouch. Are you kidding me, man? And this is somebody who was passed along. Mm. Passed along. Passed along. We'll give you A's just to get you out of here. Yeah, yeah. Not caring about it. That's hard, y'all. Yeah, but we can't blame the teachers because the teachers are consumed with large classrooms. And at the end of the day, y'all, we know there is something we have to make sure we are. And that is you got to be a witness for God. You got to cry loud and spare not. Come on, come on. And allow God to use you as an instrument. Watch this, to help change the world. That's right. That's right. That's right. Somebody give them praise right there. I'm done. Come on, give them praise right there. Rest on your feet. Everybody stand up on your feet. Every head bow. God, our Father, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your glory. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for everything you've done in my life. Thank you for everything you've done in the lives of your people. God, we pray ultimately, God, that you saved us for a reason. You delivered us for a reason. You redeemed us for a reason. And so, God, we stand as witnesses to your goodness, your grace, and your glory. We stand as a witness that he'll bless you. He will lift you. He will encourage you. He will push you in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. Thank you for this word. If I need to be a witness in my family, let me be a witness. If I need to be a witness in my children, let me be a witness. If I need to be a witness for my grandchildren, let me be a witness. In the name of Jesus, I declare today, God, that I'm going to be a witness for you because you've been so good to me. You've been so wonderful to me. God, I give you praise. Thank you. Continue to lift you up in Jesus' name. Every heart say, amen. Come on, give God praise. Hug somebody. Love somebody. Go to the church open. Find three people. Hug them. Tell them, be a witness. Hallelujah. 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 Till I die. Come on, I will. Put your hands together. I will. I will. I will. Till I die. Come on, everybody. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. 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 Come on, everybody. Come on. to say I'm going to treat everybody right. Come on. I'm going to treat everybody right. I'm going to treat everybody right. Come on, put them hands together. Come on. I'm going to treat everybody right. Till I die. Till I die. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I
till I die. Come on and praise him. 